how can Israel defeat Palestinians? What can be accepted like the uh, defeat of uh, Hamas? The Look, uh, so, so this is a, an important question because, so what, what, what constitutes defeat? I mean, let me say this, you cannot achieve, uh, you cannot achieve peace without defeating the enemy. Uh, in all of human history, there are almost no cases where peace was negotiated between, you know, somebody that we accept as good and somebody we accept as bad. Peace is achieved when one side is thoroughly defeated, crushed. Peace with Japan was achieved because of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I have no question in my mind. And today, Japan is America's best friend, one of its best friends. Nobody in Japan thinks, oh my God, they did Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We should hate America forever. I've been to Japan. I'm sure many of you have been to Japan. It's an incredibly friendly place to Americans. They love Americans. And they have a great relationship politically with America. Why? Because they realized they fought a war. They lost. They were defeated thoroughly. There was no question of who won and who lost. Like after World War I, the Germans weren't sure they lost. They thought they could have won. Guess what happened? And it was a negotiated peace. Germany was never crushed. You get World War II. But after World War II, Germany became America's best friend. Why? Because they were crushed. Churchill is considered today a war criminal for ordering the bombing of Dresden. But part of the reason Germany was pacified and was willing to accept friendship with the Allies ultimately was because Dresden was bombed, because they were crushed. Now, it's not nice to say but I'm not, I guess many people don't think I'm nice, so fine. The Palestinians need to be crushed. They need to be brought to their knees. They need to be brought to the point where they say to themselves, we will never defeat Israel. We better figure out how to live with them because we will never defeat them. And every time Israel negotiates, Every time Israel compromises, every time Israel bad, leaves Gaza and whatever, it's sending a message of weakness. It's sending a message, next time they can get us. Next time they will beat us. Next time, and, and this is why. You send missiles, we don't do much, right? So they say, okay, so we'll do more. They just did what they did. What, how are we going to respond? If Israel responds weakly, they will become more aggressive, not less aggressive. You cannot negotiate and compromise with Hamas. You cannot negotiate and compromise with Hitler. That was tried. Doesn't work. It emboldens the enemy. It always does. The only alternative is to crush them. Now, what does crushing look like? It's not, you know, it means Israel needs to go into Gaza. It needs to occupy Gaza. It needs to destroy everything Hamas related, it needs to imprison thousands of people, maybe tens of thousands of people, because Hamas is a big, you know, people in Israel and elsewhere, they say, oh, we'll go in and kill Hamas. Who is Hamas? Maybe they lost their territory. Certainly they need to lose the territory, and Israel needs to occupy the place and stay there for a while, for a long time, until there's actually somebody to talk to and negotiate peace with. They need to reoccupy the West Bank. They need to get rid of this uh, bizarre notion that the uh, Palestinian Authority is somehow better and they can negotiate with them and they will bring peace. Again, weakness. There has to pass a generation, maybe, of Palestinians who accept the fact that Israel is there to stay. And then we can negotiate a two-state solution, a one-state solution. There are lots of solutions you can come to. I have no objection to any solution that brings peace. I want peace. But you cannot negotiate with those who are committed to killing you. You cannot negotiate. You don't negotiate with a murderer. You don't negotiate with a kidnapper. If, if, if Benjamin Netanyahu had read the book he wrote about terrorism that he wrote in the 1990s, where I think chapter two is never negotiate with terrorists, I wish he'd read it. He never read his own book. And as a consequence, he's never practiced what he actually wrote. He, he's, he's, he's been one of the weakest prime ministers Israel's ever seen. He's negotiated with them over and over again since the late 1990s. It's a reality. I hate to say it, but it's a reality. 
I'm a great admirer of his brother. <laughs> yes.